Welcome back guys, it is Storm. In this episode we are going to look at the clone command. So first of all, let's take a look at the inputs required for the clone command. So let's just type in clone. And we can see here we've got a whole bunch of inputs. There's a X1, Y1, Z1, X2, Y2, Z2, an X, Y and Z and an optional mode input. Interesting, isn't that donkey? <laughs> okay, so first of all, the X1, Y1 and Z1 and the X2, Y2, Z2, what is that doing is defining a cubic area to clone. So, for example, if I were to put a block down there and a block up here, and these represented X1, Y1, Z1, X2, Y2, Z2, then that's defining every block that's between these two points. So this is inclusive, this is inclusive, etc. And everything between these two blocks. Now you can find the coordinates for these two blocks here just by pressing your F3, looking at the block, and you can see there this is coordinate of minus 260, 68, 260, and this one is minus 256, 72, 256. So that could be our X1, Y1, Z1, X2, Y2, Z2. And this doesn't have to be a square, it could be any shape, but it needs to there is a block limitation that's currently around 4,000 blocks. It may change in future updates, but yeah, that's the first six inputs to the clone command. Okay, so now we need, what do we need? The next three coordinates define the destination location for the clone. So basically we're saying we're defining this whole area here to clone, and I want to put the blocks over here on this little pad here. Now the destination X, Y, and Z needs to be the most northwest position for the clone area. So we see here we're currently facing north, that direction is west, so the most northwest position is right down there. Now you can also tell that this is the correct location because your x direction, which is this direction, should be increasing in value when you walk away from your position, which it was, and this value here should be also increasing. So the z is increasing and the x is increasing. So that is the most northwest location to copy the the blocks to. So this uh, looking at position is minus 260, 68, 248. And what we can do now is put all those inputs into the command. So let's just do that now. So here's all these coordinates put in. And now the mode. Now the mode by default is replaced. So I don't have to mention that. And I can just say copy or clone. And what that is doing is taking everything inside this location and replace also includes air blocks. So if I were to put a block just there, for example, and then run the command, there we go. It's copied the exact same position and block type from this location over to this location. So let's now put this inside a command block. And that's what this command here is doing. And we've got replace uh, at the end here for the mode. So here's the command that's being run. And now let's hook up this redstone clock. Now I've got a whole bunch of, it's copying all the time or cloning all the time at the moment. Um, so if we don't want to see that in the chat message, all we can do is can go to options, multiplayer settings, chat, and change that to hidden. Okay, so now what happens is if I put a block in here, it's straight away going to clone it to this other pad. So that's pretty cool. I can just put a couple of random blocks around the place here and it's all been copied. Now replace means that's taking air blocks as well and cloning it from this location to this location. So that means if I try to place a block over here, I can't place it because there's air block over here and it's cloning it, the air block from here to here. So, how do we change that? What we can do is change the mode now to uh, not replace, we're going to change it to mast. And if we say OK to that, I can still copy blocks. So let's just put another block here, we can see it's just cloned that. But if I were to place a block on this side, it hasn't destroyed it. Why? Because it's an air block over this side. It will be replaced if I put a non air block on this side. So here we go, I've got a red wool block and it's just updated on this side. But I can place any other number of blocks over here as long as there's an air block on the, the clone location, so the source location, it won't be overridden at the destination. So that's pretty cool. Now you may be wondering, can you copy entities, so mobs or players? 
in the same way by using the clone command? The answer is you can't. You can only copy blocks. And to prove it, here we go, we're just going to put in a horse which is unfortunately trapped, so let's just get away from him. But you can see that the, the horse is not being copied, or the, the horse is not being cloned to this other pad here. So items also won't be copied, so if I throw in this egg just down in this corner here, it's not going to be cloned to this other side. So it is only blocks. Now it does clone fire, so that's also considered as a block. So here we've got down our nether rack, which is now defined over here. So you better get out of the way, donkey, you're about to get roasted. So I warned you, you can't say I didn't warn you. And we can see that because we've got fire over on this block, it's actually recreating the fire on this other side here. So, get out of here, donkey. <laughs> so, the interesting thing is, if we were to change this back to... Uh, ...replace, which also includes air blocks, the fire is still being copied. And the interesting thing is you can't put it out on this side because the block is always being replaced um, by this source location here. So it's on fire over there, so I can't put it out here. Same reason why I can't destroy any other blocks. So just like that annoying bug you get in multiplayer sometimes when you can't destroy blocks, you can now recreate that using the clone command. <laughs> so I don't know why you would want to do that, but it's possible for you to do that. So obviously if you put any blocks outside of your clone location, so here for example, because that was not within these two points, it hasn't copied it or cloned the block to this other side here. Now you might be wondering, does the clone command also copy data tags for blocks? And we can test that by just going to an anvil and we're going to rename this chest to be a super chest. And what we're going to do is place that chest over in this clone area. I'm also going to place, um, let's place a couple of blocks in there. I'm also going to put a command block in this source location and I'm also going to type in a command in here, which is just a dummy command. And on this other side, we can see the blocks have been recreated. Now, the chest, you can't really open it, but you can see uh, well, what we could do is just disable this clock temporarily because it's done what it needed to do, which was copy the blocks from the source location to the destination. We can see the block has the correct name, it's got the correct objects inside here, or items rather, and if we look inside the command block, it's also got the command. So all the data tags are also copied by the clone command, and yeah, I think that's pretty useful. So that's pretty much the clone command in a nutshell. Don't forget you can't clone uh, blocks into unloaded chunks. So the destination location must be in a loaded chunk area. It's just a limitation of the game. And yeah, it's a pretty fun way to muck around with uh, blocks. And you could create all interesting games with this kind of concept. Reset parts of your map example, uh, for example, where you might want to uh, re-clone a, a template for a location on your map, for example a house or a building or something, and yeah, you could recreate that in various ways through command blocks. So I hope you guys found that interesting. Check the video playlist for further uh, command examples uh, in Minecraft, and until next time, stay awesome guys. Alright, see you guys. Cheers.